Hey guys, what's up? This is Manas and I'm back with a new tutorial on development of surfaces. Now guys, if you've seen my previous lecture based on development of pyramids, uh, this is basically a continuation and we're going to be taking up yet another problem in this series. So it goes like this and this particular problem is based on a pentagonal pyramid. So let's read it. Okay. So a pentagonal pyramid base 30 mm side and axis 60 mm long is resting with its base on HP and one edge of the base is perpendicular to the VP. Okay, so there is a pentagonal pyramid having a base of 30 millimeters and axis 60 millimeters and since the base is uh, pentagonal in shape, it is resting with its base on HP. Alright, and one of its edges, okay, out of the five edges, there is one such edge which is perpendicular to VP. So we have to keep that in mind while making its top view and front view. Alright, um, it is cut by a section plane perpendicular to the VP and inclined at 60 degrees to the HP and bisecting the axis whole lot of conditions are there and which should reflect perfectly in our drawing throughout the development of the pyramid. So here we have it. The object is a pentagonal pyramid having a base of 30 millimeters and axis 60 millimeters. Now there is this condition given to us that says resting with its base on HP. Now this pentagonal pyramid has been kept with its base on HP. Now guys, one thing is for sure. Please think about this, that the true shape of the base will only be seen from the top. Okay, so you have to begin by drawing the top view first and there is one more condition you've got to ensure that while drawing the top view you have to keep one edge of that base perpendicular to VP or perpendicular to XY line in making the top view. Alright, now let's get the details uh, regarding the cutting plane. So we have this theta CP is equal to 60 degree that is the angle made by the cutting plane aka AIP that is what you call auxiliary inclined plane. Well, to define this guy, auxiliary inclined plane, you can see that this uh, is a plane which is perpendicular to the VP and at a certain angle with the horizontal plane. That's what you call an AIP. Okay. And bisecting the axis means that it is 30 mm above the base since the axis length is 60 millimeters. And since it's bisecting the axis, hence 30 above the bisecting point and 30 below the bisecting point. All right. Now let's get to the drawing portion of this. Alright guys, now we're going to begin by drawing an XY line. So here we have drawn a line. Okay, so this is what you call the XY line over here. And this, I've kept this edge out of the five edges. One edge has to be kept perpendicular to the XY line. So this edge has been drawn and it's going to have a length of 30 millimeters. Alright, now through this point over here, this point at an angle of 108 degrees, since the internal angle of a pentagon is 108, you need to draw a line again, 30 millimeters long, something like this. Okay, at an angle of 108. 30 millimeter long line and from this point also at the same angle same stuff all right now simply you need to keep a rounder over here or your compass set it to 30 millimeters okay put an arc over here somewhere here and then again with this guy as center put one more arc these two arcs are going to intersect at a certain point over here and then you need to do just this all right so that's the pentagon and let's um, now name all the five corners so the R, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, alright. Now the top view is almost done, okay, with a few modifications yet to be carried out. Alright, now this top view is going to have an apex, uh, this pyramid in fact is going to have an apex and this apex is going to look like a center point of this pentagon. How are you going to find that center point? So the idea is pretty simple, you need to take an angular bisector for this, angular bisector will come from here angular bisector of this uh, corner 5 is going to come over here then angular bisector of this one all of them from 1 2 3 are going to meet at a certain point and that's what we call the top view of the apex okay and it should look something like this all right and we're going to represent this point by o simply writing o all right top view is almost done let's move forward and we're going to look at this object from over here from the front and all these projector lines are going to intersect this XY line somewhere here. Okay, so from this point onwards, we're going to go up ahead and we know very well that the axis length has been given as 60 millimeters. So we need to go ahead, go upwards rather by an amount of 60 millimeters. Okay, and these are what you call the um, front view corresponding to one is one dash front view corresponding to this point over here. You have to see two first and then behind two you have this point. So this single point corresponds to two dash and five dash. And then we have this three dash and four dash. All right. Let's move ahead. Let's draw the axis height of 60 millimeters. 
and for axis you need to use a dash dot line something like this all right fine so that's what you call the axis this is the top view of the apex and over here i'm going to write the front view corresponding front view of the apex it's going to be o dash all right next step is to join all these slant edges to o dash from one dash from two dash five dash and from three dash four dash and it should look something like this all right guys fine so the front view and top view are done the next thing to do is to locate the cutting plane now i've already told you that the cutting plane is bisecting the axis somewhere here okay so if this is 60 then this height at which this red point you see you can clearly see this red point over here it is going to be at a height of 30 millimeters and from this point you need to draw a horizontal line okay and then something like this at an angle of 60 degrees you need to draw one more line that is what you call the cutting plane okay dash double dot is the philosophy for this dash double dot for cutting plane all right so that's a cutting plane now this particular cutting plane intersects this uh, pentagonal pyramid right at the base then over this slantage um, slanted as the front that is O2 slantage and slantage at the back that is O5 alright O5 also okay and then this slantage also it intersects and uh, this slantage is represented by O-3 dash, dash in front view and O3 in the top view so it is going to this point is uh, going to have uh, two different intersecting points one over here and the other one over here so that is one at the front and other at the back all right so let's name all these intersection points and this is going to be um, a and b all right now over here we have uh, point c dash and uh, one more point is there that is d dash so c dash going to is going to be somewhere around o2 and d dash is going to be somewhere around o5 okay one at the front other at the back and then corresponding to this point we have e dash and f dash all right so in order to precisely locate the position of A and B, we need to produce this point in the downward direction, okay? So this is going to be A, alright, and this over here is going to be B. Fine, let's move ahead. Now guys, you can clearly see that there are as many as 5 slant edges in the form of O1, O2, O3, O4 and O5. Out of these 5 slant edges, you need to pick a slant edge which is absolutely parallel to this, what do you call, XY line, okay? So you can clearly see that this O1 slant edge is absolutely parallel to this XY line and hence it's corresponding front view 1 dash and O dash. This one is the front view O dash 1 dash will show the true length. So the true length is O dash 1 dash. Okay fine let's move ahead. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from this point. Okay so this is going to be caps lock O all right big and bold all right. Now we need to take O dash 1 dash as the arc or the radius and with O as the center okay you need to draw an arc something like this and this is going to be your point 1 okay okay the next thing to be done is to have points 2 3 4 5 all right now you can clearly see that the distance between 1 and 2 is 30 millimeters since the base edge is 30 millimeters okay so what we're going to do is we'll take an arc of 30 millimeters in your compass and with 1 as center we're going to put an arc okay then again the same stuff with this guy as center you need to again put an arc this is going to be point uh, this is point two this is three keep it going this is four this is five and you're going to end up again at one so this is going to be one all right so let's have all these points one two three four five and back to one now guys you can clearly see that all these points are joined by straight edges straight lines so let's do that in the development also from 1 to 2 let's draw a line then from 2 to 3 then from 3 to 4 4 to 5 and back to 1 fine now we need to draw these slant edges also okay these slant edges will look something like this please keep watching okay something like this all right so these are these slant edges in the development fine so we have seen this a and b so we need to precisely locate this position of a and you can clearly see that a lies a lies somewhere between 1 and 2 so you need to take this arc over here okay so both one leg of your compass or rounder is going to be over here while the other leg is going to be here okay then with one as center you need to put an arc over here and this is the precise location of point a in the development okay this exactly somewhere here all right same stuff is going to be for for finding the location of point b you need to again take uh, keep one leg of your compass over here and the other leg over here okay then this this one as center you need to put an arc once again okay something like this and this is over here is going to be point p okay 
you can clearly see this one between one and two we have a between one and two we have a and similarly between one and five we have b one and five we have b now let's uh, go for the other points now for locating point c and d you can clearly see that point c is going to lie in the slant edge o2 whereas point d is right behind uh, in the slant edge o5 for that i'm going to do a small little small little construction and i'm going to project a line in the direction of this slant edge and it's going to be projected in such a way that it is going to intersect this slant edge somewhere here okay so that is going to show the exact location. So these points are going to be denoted by C1 dash and D1 dash. All right. So the next step is to keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here, and then with O as center. Okay. You need to cut, cut an arc over here. All right. Watch this cable fully. So this is going to be your point C. So point C is uh, in this land edge O2. All right. So this is going to be point C. Again, the arc is going to be same. The radius is going to be same. All right. Once again, you need to put an arc and it's going to be on O5, all right? It's going to be looking something like this and that's point D, fine. Let's move further. So we have as many as A, B, C and D, four points, E and F, they're still left. Let's figure them out quickly. Since E and F don't lie on the, what do you call, uh, true length, they have to be projected towards true length, okay? Until they intersect the true length at a certain point. And that certain point is in fact E1 dash, F1 dash. All right. So you need to keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here. Then with this guy center, you need to put an arc over here, something like this. Okay. So that's point E for you. All right. Again, you need to repeat this step. Okay. One leg over here, other leg over here. Then with this guy OS center, you need to again put an arc and that's point F for you. All right. So the development is almost done. With a few final touches let's join all these points with the help of a straight line a to c c to e e to f and then f to d and then d to b all right so that's how you can do the development of a pentagonal pyramid which is cut by cutting plane at an angle of 60 degree and also bisecting it all right and a few final touches um, the portion which is to be darkened i'm going to show you one more figure one more drawing rather in which you will understand which portion is to be darkened and which is to be left as it is. Okay guys, remember this thumb rule. All the drawing that we have done until now can be carried out with the help of a 3H pencil. Alright, now as far as the darkening portion is concerned, you need to make use of an H pencil. And it should look something like this. Let me show you. Okay, so this is the portion below the cutting plane. It has to be darkened. Okay, this much slant edge will be visible okay this much slant edge is visible c22 d25 c22 and d25 then we have e23 and f24 e23 and f24 okay this much portion only of the development is has been retained and that's why it has been darkened so guys that was all from my side if you have any doubts queries questions feel free to ask Write them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer and respond in the best possible way and as quickly as possible. So this is Manas Patnak signing off. Take care. Have a great day and keep drawing.